Some idiot wrote, memorising your own verse is like bottling your own farts. <laughs> it's nothing short of perverse, an arse blast to the arts. <laughs> My poetry career began early in primary school. Sister Joseph had a favourite punishment for offenders like me. She'd lock me in a cupboard in the back of the classroom. I didn't think it was much of a punishment. It, uh, it got me out of maths and science and into my imagination, uh, which is a sort of dark rabbit warren of ideas where I've taken refuge ever since and lived and been nourished with lines like these. Stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone, prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone, silence the pianos and with muffled drum, bring out the coffin, let the mourners come. Those lines were famously used in the great romantic comedy Four Weddings and a Funeral in 1994. But in fact, they were written in 1936 by the great English poet W.H. Auden. And at the time, they were a satire on the death of a politician. How do you remember learning your childhood poems? Was it like me learning to eat my veggies? You know, cram, 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 and then vomit. <laughs> I, I remember my first schoolboy poetry challenge. And uh, I was tasked with reviewing in 20th century verse the 17th century poems of the metaphysical writer John Donne. So, of course, I chose a tried and tested old traditional and used the roses are red, violets are blue method. His poems are dead, his verses are spew. Unless you're off your effing head, you'll effing hate them too. <laughs> I have to say I made that up as all school poets do. Um, one of my English school teachers at the time introduced me to drugs. <laughs> I don't mean narcotics so much, I mean the drugs of rhyme, rhythm, meter. And he left me with a lifelong addiction to an art form that can make nuclear explosions out of very small word bombs. Um, which brings me to some big questions about poetry. What is its value? Why does it survive but in dismal doggerel at our weddings and funerals? Why doesn't it just lie down and die? Our daughters are of an age where they're having their own children and of course gifting us with grandchildren. And their first gifts are, guess what? Nursery rhymes, poems, music in words. And when I read and hear those poems and nursery rhymes, I not only re recollect them fully, but they reconnect me to my past and the generations who went before me, and I'm sure to the generations who will follow me. Um, That, that little boy locked in the cupboard kind of grew up, but the womb music of his mother's heartbeat in his head never quite went away. And that idiot that I talked about at the beginning, yep, that was me. That was my excuse for reading rather than reciting this. Suppose I claimed that poetry contained the heartbeat and the music of our tongue, and further, that in verse we see explained all memory, hear resurrection sung, and come to terms with crib to grave in rhymes. My theory isn't that far off the truth. 
um, poetry's been here since ancient times. We most had Humpty Dumpty in our youth. We, a few of us continued in our way to grasp a little Shakespeare, Wordsworth, Blake. Some swear the art is dead or dying. They insist it's time to burn it at the stake. I think Larkin, though, who bleakly yearned to prove through verse that what will survive of us is love. Thank you.